Today, we're going to talk about management of endontic emergencies. I believe that a lot of us had phone calls from a relative of ours or a friend who was complaining of pain, of severe pain, and you wanted to help him. So let's see how could we help these relatives or friends. Now, what is an endontic emergency? Now, an endontic emergency is pain and or swelling caused by inflammation or infection of the pulpal or periapical tissues. Now, this is by definition important. However, there is a crucial point that is important to differ between a true emergency and a regular pain. Now, a true emergency will always interfere with any activities that the patient will have. For example, he will not be able to go to work. If he has any important appointments, he will not go to these important appointments because a true emergency will interfere with these activities and he will require immediate treatment. Now, why are endontic emergencies important? Why are we talking about that topic? Well, actually, endontic emergencies are important because from 60 to 80% of all dental emergencies are actually endodontic emergencies. So we all need to be able to manage these emergencies, whether we are general practitioners or endodontists, of course. So a 60 to 80% amount is a very high percentage, it's not a low one. Today, we're going to talk about various clinical scenarios about clinical emergencies, including acute pulpitis, acute pulpitis with acute apical periodontitis, periapical abscess, including acute periapical abscess without swelling, acute periapical abscess with swelling, whether intraoral or extraoral, and lastly, the phoenix abscess. Now, starting with the acute pulpitis, what would the patient come complaining of in cases of acute pulpitis? Usually in the acute pulpitis pain, it is not localized, it is diffuse might be spontaneous, or it might be illustrated by cold fluids, hot fluids, and if there is pain with cold, the cold stimulus results in some lingering pain, pain that does not disappear after removal of the stimulus. When the patient drinks cold water, for example, the pain lingers, stays for, for a while after he drinks the cold fluids. And in the later stages of the pulpal inflammation in the acute pulpitis, pain becomes spontaneous. It results without any stimuli, whether hot or cold. And hot rings usually result in pain in later stages also in pulpal inflammation. And the problem here is that always the patient complains of pain that is diffuse and it's not localized. So the patient might come complaining of pain related to the lower left jaw, while actually there is acute pulpitis in the upper jaw and not the lower. A posterior tooth can result in referred pain to an anterior one. And also an anterior tooth can result in referred pain to a posterior one. But pain is never referred across the midline. So it is impossible for a pain in the upper left quadrant to result in pain in the upper right one. Now, in case of that acute pulpitis, how are you going to manage such a case? Well, if we don't have time in this clinical emergency, we're going to perform an access cavity preparation and we're going to do a pulpotomy where we're going to remove the pulpal tissue until we remove it till the orifice. And in this scenario, you do not need to enter and perform a, a partial pulpectomy. What I mean by a partial pulpectomy is that you enter and remove parts of the pulpal tissue and not the whole pulp. So if you don't have time, do pulpotomy. Why is that? Why would you only perform pulpotomy and don't enter and perform pulpectomy or remove part of the pulpal tissue? Because there is various studies, including uh, uh, very famous classical studies that compare the post-operative pain for the patients after performing either pulpotomy or partial pulpectomy, meaning that you remove part of the pulp. So in these studies, they got two groups of patients. One group, they performed only pulpotomy and they performed the access cavity preparation of the pulpotomy. And during the access also, we irrigate by sodium hypochlorite for, for sure to dissolve the pulpal tissue. So a group, they performed pulpotomy and the other group, they performed a partial pulpectomy where they removed parts 
of the pulp tissues from the, within the root canal, but they did not complete the cleaning and shaping. So in this case, they found that patients where pulpotomy was performed only, the post-operative pain was much, much less compared to the patients where partial pulpectomy was done. And the reason for that is when parts of the pulp are cut, the remainder parts of the pulp that are not removed results in a greater amount of inflammation and results in greater amount of pain. And something called nociceptive firing, where the nerve inside the root canal sends impulses to the brain, resulting in severe pain. And this pain is continuous and it lingers. So uh, pulpotomy is the emergency choice compared to partial pulpectomy in cases of acute pulpitis if you do not have time. However, if you have time, then please enter and perform root canal treatment. You can finish a case with acute pulpitis in a single visit. Another thing, in the case of that you don't have time and you entered and you have uh, done an emergency pulpotomy, you can see here, this is another classical studies that uh, um, so does medicaments uh, placed in cottons result in a decrease in pain after performing the pulpotomy. So they did a study where they, a clinical study, where they got two groups of patients. One group of patients, they placed a medicament within the cotton and then placed it on the pulp tissue and placed the temporary filling above. And the other group, they performed the pulpotomy and then placed only the dry cotton and the temporary filling above. The, dry, the cotton is dry without any medication. And then they saw the post-operative pain between the two groups. And they found that there was no statistical difference between the two groups, meaning that the medicated cotton did not differ in pain relief. So after performing pulpotomy, if you don't have time, or after finishing your treatment, uh, if you have time by cleaning, shaping, and obturation, uh, you have to prescribe some anti-inflammatories. Anti-inflammatories for the patient that he will take for an average of two to three days in order to decrease the post-operative inflammation and the pain after your treatment. Of course, after the pulpotomy that you have done in the emergency visit, the patient will schedule another appointment in order to complete the, the tooth and you would perform cleaning, shaping, and obturation. Now, moving along to the acute pulpitis with acute apical periodontitis. In this scenario, the pulpal inflammation passed through the pulpal tissue until it reached the bone, periapically to the tooth. And at that point, the pain differed a little bit from being diffuse to being localized, where the patient can come to you and pinpoint on the tooth the exact tooth that is causing the pain because the inflammation reached the periapical tissues below the tooth and resultant in stimulation of special nerve cells that send impulses to the brain for the correct location of the inflammation and the pain. So in cases of acute apical periodontitis, here there will, the pain will be localized. Another thing is that when you take a periapical x-ray, periapically the x-ray it will be sound with no periapical radiolucencies or lesions. So in cases with, of acute pulpitis with acute apical periodontitis, where the pulp is vital, periapical picture for the tooth will be sound. There will be no periapical lesions. Now, for the management of that scenario, if you don't have time, you will perform a pulpotomy, an access cavity preparation, as we just talked, and you might need to relieve the occlusion, and we will talk about relieving the occlusion within a minute now. And if you don't have a specific time also, of course, you will prescribe anti-inflammatories for the patient, and the patient will take an appointment to complete the treatment afterwards. Of course, if you have time, you will complete your cleaning and shaping completely, finish it in a single visit, and there is no problem for you to finish a case with acute pulpitis and acute apical periodontitis in a single visit you can finish it in a single visit normally. And also you can relieve the occlusion and you're going to prescribe anti-inflammatories. Let's see the, the issue of relieving the occlusion. In cases where the patient is complaining of pain on biting, in the cases of acute pulpitis and acute apical periodontitis, uh, when you relieve the occlusion, the post-operative pain after the treatment will decrease and the pain 
tenderness to biting for the patient will also decrease because you relieve the occlusion. So let's see uh, what do the studies say about relieving the occlusion. Well, there is an older study that, uh, uh, older clinical study that saw, saw the effect of occlusal reduction on pain after endontic instrumentation. They got groups, they got a group where they, the, the group of patients that complained of acute pulpitis and acute apical periodontitis. And in that group, they, after the treatment that they have done, they relieved the occlusion. And then they got another group also with acute pulpitis and acute apical periodontitis. And in this group, they uh, relieved the occlusion. So one group, they did not relieve the occlusion and another group, they relieved the occlusion. And they saw the post-operative pain. They found that the post-operative pain decreased markedly in the case of the relief of the occlusion. So when they relieved the occlusion, in the cases with acute pulpitis and apical periodontitis, the pain decreased great, gradually and then the, 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 the patient was more comfortable. However, this is a more recent study that uh, they performed a randomized clinical trial and they also got two groups. Group, they performed occlusal reduction, they relieved, relieved the occlusion, and the other group, they did not relieve the occlusion. And they found that there was no statistical difference between the two groups, meaning that after relieving the occlusion and or not relieving the occlusion, it did not differ. So if there is mixed uh, results in randomized clinical trials about the relief of occlusion regarding the post-operative pain, what should we do? We can do something. In cases where the tooth needs cuspal coverage after the endodontic treatment, you can relieve the occlusion a little bit because it will need cuspal coverage in the future, so you can relieve the occlusion a little bit. However, in cases where the tooth will not need cuspal coverage in the future after endodontic treatment, you can leave it without the relief of occlusion. Now, moving on to the periapical abscess cases, um, and infective cases. Now, we can have an acute periapical abscess without swelling. If you take a look here on this periapical x-ray, you would find that the upper lateral incisor here, it does not have a periapical redulucency. So this is a very important point where in cases where there is an acute periapical abscess, there is no periapical lesions below the tooth. Again, if you have an acute periapical abscess, if you take an X-ray, there will you will not find a periapical lesion or a periapical redulucency below the tooth. Of course, the patient will be complaining of severe pain, pain on biting, throbbing pain, spontaneous pain, and sometimes the patients complain that they feel that the tooth it's a little bit elevated from its pocket or its position, and if it's touched by anything, it, it performs that there is severe pain when it's being touched and very tender to biting and percussion. So in cases with the acute periapical abscess without the swelling, how would we manage these cases? Now first, we're, we're going to uh, perform an uh, access cavity. And while you're performing your access cavity, if the pus is under apical pressure, sometimes you open the tooth and you find the pus coming out of the tooth. And commonly the pus is accompanied by some blood because it is under apical pressure, and this apical pressure results in this severe pain and this throbbing pain. So sometimes you just open the tooth, you access it, and you find the pus coming out. When this happens, you start to disinfect the tooth. You need to irrigate by sodium hypochlorite. There was a misconception that sodium hypochlorite should not be used in cases with uh, pus, because it causes clumping of the pus. However, you need to disinfect the root canal, and that is very important. Sodium hypochlorite disinfects the root canal, and at the same time, you need the, the your agent, the, your, your disinfectant agent, to dissolve some of the remnant necrotic pulp tissue. So you need to irrigate by sodium hypochlorite. It's very important. Saline has no effect of any antibacterial properties. So again, you need to irrigate by sodium hypochlorite. In the cases where you have acute periapical abscess, you need better to make some time and complete your cleaning and shaping. Try to 
entirely complete your cleaning and chipping. Now we have the electronic apex locators. We have rotary files, endontic motors, and the, the, the procedure itself, the endontic procedure, it's a little, bit, a little bit speedy. So you can complete your cleaning and shaping. Of course, you're not going to do obturation where, where there is pus below the tooth. And uh, regarding if you open the tooth and you, you don't find pus coming out of the tooth, what should you do? If there is no pus coming out of the tooth and the patient complains of severe pain on biting and throbbing pain, severe pain on percussion, you might do a patency. While after getting the working length, you might pass beyond the working length, the minor apical constriction and the apical foramen by file size, K file size 15 to the periapical tissues by one millimeter. You don't need to bypass them by large files. Okay, so you can pass by file 15 and this file, if there is some pus periapically below the tooth, the pus will begin to come inside the root canal. So again, you're going to irrigate by sodium hypochlorite and try to make some time in these scenarios to complete the cleaning and shaping to decrease the amount of the microorganisms within the root canal. You will need to place a dry cotton after you finish that. A medicated cotton will not provide any added benefit. Uh, creaser containing medicaments such as formic creaser and so on and so forth result in periapical inflammation. So avoid placing any of these medicaments on your cotton. And then there is the crucial thing. You have to place a temporary filling. Don't leave the tooth open in case of the acute periapical abscess. Because if you leave the tooth open, you will start to have a mixed infection. While the microorganisms within the saliva will enter within the tooth and cause you a mixed infection that will be hard to eradicate and control in the future. Now, if you have this acute periapical abscess, but in this scenario, you have it with a swelling, an intraoral swelling, not an extraoral one. So you have an acute periapical abscess with the swelling and it is intraoral. Again, in the periapical x-ray, if you look at it, in the acute periapical abscess, the radiographically, it will be sound. There will be no periapical radiolucency or periapical lesion below the tooth. So you will have an intraoral swelling, and yes, in the acute periapical abscess, you will not have a periapical radiolucency below the tooth. And the management is as before. You will complete, you will try to complete the cleaning and shaping in order to decrease the load within the root canal of the microorganisms and the bacteria. And then after you finish the cleaning and shaping, you will place dry cotton, a temporary filling, and then you're going to remove your rubber dam and you are going to open incise the swelling. You're, you're going to drain the swelling that you have intraoral. You have to drain it. Don't leave any intraoral swellings. So this fluctuant swelling, it must be open and drained. Do not leave it because any pus that is left will result in a decrease and retardment of your healing. So complete your cleaning and shaping and open your swelling. In this scenario, do not place intracanal medicaments, for example, as calcium hydroxide paste. Because if you place here calcium hydroxide paste within the root canal, after you have this intraoral swelling, some pus might remain or some exudate might remain below the tooth. In this scenario, you will cause a buildup of strong periapical pressure below the tooth and the patient might feel severe pain. Of course, in this scenario, you will prescribe for the patient after you finish your cleaning and shaping, anti-inflammatories. Anti-inflammatories here are very important. The patient will need to take them three to four days. And if the patient is immunocompetent, meaning that his immunity is well, is not immunocompromised, you do not need to prescribe antibiotics in cases of intraoral swellings. So intraoral swellings and acute periapical abscess, you will try to finish your cleaning and shaping, and then you're going to incise and drain the swelling prescribe anti-inflammatories, and you do not need to prescribe an antibiotic. If you have an extraoral swelling, now the swelling passed through the bone below the muscles and resulted in some swelling in the patient's face. Now, this is a serious situation, and you will need to focus and manage it very, very cautiously. In this scenario, if you can work and the patient is not of that much pain, you will perform an access cavity preparation, and you will try to finish also your cleaning and shaping if the patient can open his mouth. And in this scenario, you will need to prescribe antibiotics. And better here to allow the patient to take intramuscular antibiotic injections because the injections work faster than oral antibiotics and they will result in much more uh, uh, healing capability 
uh, in comparison to the oral antibiotics. And the patients in these extra oral swellings can also rinse with hot water and salt within his mouth. He's going to rinse with hot water and salt. He will take systemic antibiotics. And of course, you're going to uh, finish your cleaning and shaping if you can. If the patient cannot open his mouth at all, then he's going to take the anti-inflammatories, systemic antibiotic, preferably intramuscular injections. And then when the swelling decreases a little bit, he can return to you for you to, to start your treatment. And again, please do not leave these teeth open. Place a temporary filling after you finish your cleaning and shaping. Now, lastly, the Phoenix abscess. What is the Phoenix abscess? In cases where you have a periapical radiolucency or a periapical lesion, and this periapical lesion starts pus within it to accumulate due to death of some of the microorganisms and microorganisms destroying some tissues that are present there periapically. In this scenario, some pus might start to accumulate. And what will the patient come complaining of? Well, the patient will come complaining of pain and biting, throbbing pain, severe pain. Some mobility on the tooth might happen. The patient might tell you that the tooth is a little bit elevated. So in this scenario, you will have to do, as we said before, in the case of acute periapical apps, where you will enter, you're going to perform your access cavity preparation. You will try to finish your cleaning and shaping because when you finish your cleaning and shaping, again, you're going to decrease the amount of necrotic tissues within the root canal, and you will allow better healing capability for the tooth. So you're going to finish your cleaning and shaping. You're going to place a cotton and a temporary filling above it, and you're going to use also a, a dry cotton, not a medicated one. And you're going to pr prescribe anti-inflammatories. So while we're talking about all these emergencies and how would we manage them all? Why is managing such endontic emergencies important? And why do we need to effectively manage them? Why do we need to do the treatment very well? Well, the answer here is because we need to save the, these teeth. If you do not effectively manage these cases, you will lose the teeth. So effective emergency care can save the natural tooth and provide decades of service to our patients. I hope you liked uh, this emergency control uh, um, presentation. And uh, anyone that has any questions, please go ahead and start to ask. Um, this is my Facebook account, Facebook page, Everdent Education Center. And this is my also Instagram account if anyone wants to ask me any further questions beyond that. Thank you.